Celtic is on to GSA issue three. Uh, James Robinson and David Goyer writing with Stephen Sadowski on the art. So we ended last issue with Mordru showing up after they found the fate baby. At least one of the teams did. It wasn't all the teams. Um, I'm specifying that because the other teams show up, uh, you know, a yeah, little bit into this. He picked out them, you know, really quickly, or he did at the end of last issue. Yeah, he's got a hot and girl, he's... but the throw it, he's, you know, he's been all threatening, he's like, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to yeah. kill Fate Baby. And, and... and then the cavalry arrives. <laughs> well, Starman cuts off his goddamn hand, is what happens. Yeah, and the rest of them come in riding green horses, courtesy of Alan. Oh, well, green Pegasus. Yeah, Pegasus, yeah, they're flying horses, let's get it that right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's I important. Mean, they would have been flying either way, just because yes. that's, that's kind of how this works, but whatever. Yes. Uh, they're all ready to go, Jay's going to run in, but Mordred's like, ah, screw this, and just leaves through a portal. Uh, is what it is. Uh, and they're all kind of like, crap, what do we do now? And they're like, oh, well, we have to go find, and, you know, there's a little bit of, um, like, you know, because Alan obviously was in the other team, he's like, hey, wait, who are you? And she's like, I'm Hot Girl, and my name's Kendra Sonnard. It's a long story. Ah, oh, we'll get to it later. <laughs> like, yeah. um, that, that, that kind of, that kind of moment is, like, like, a hit and miss for me, because on the one hand, I like that they're addressing it, but on the other hand, the exchange just feels like it's there, because we have to address the fact that all these other people don't know who she is, and it'll feel good if we don't. Um, it's but, one of those things where I appreciate it in the technical sense of, okay, this is, you know, maybe this to most people is a, a new character. Here's the name once again, just to remind mm -hmm. you. And we've talked a lot about how early on, especially in runs, new characters, you should be telling us their names, uh, every issue, at least at first. Um, so I get it in that sense. It feels like it's as much there for the reader as it is for, you know, for the, the rest of this team's context. And that's why, you know, it's, it's not, we don't get the full story or whatever. It's like, oh, we'll get to that later. It's fine. Just, you know, hot girl, Kendra Saunders, just just so you remember. Yeah, our man tried to look into Mordru's past and future, but as far as he can tell, he never was born and never will die, which is a bit of a conundrum. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what do you think about it? Uh, Scarab is in the Tower of Fate. We saw him go there last issue. We see him arrive here uh, with Stargirl in tow behind him, kind of spying... Mm -hmm. And Scarab's talking to the Fate Helmet. But Mordru shows up uh, and basically wipes the floor with Scarab pretty easily, rips the, uh, oh, what do they call it later? I've forgotten. It's like a Scarabium or something like that. Scarabus. So, so yeah, it's so something like that. It's the Scarab, Scarab thingamajiggy uh, off his I'm chest. I'm trying to find it because I'm really intrigued now because it was a stupid name. I, oh, re I remember that. We'll get to it. I'm, sort of, I'm, going, I'm going through it here as a thing. So... Uh, but you know, so, so she sees this. She's Courtney's kind of scared because you know she's this teenage girl. So this guy's obviously a big bad. Uh, Mordru regrows his hand out of magic energy. Uh, sorry, Chthonic forces specifically. I'll get that right. Uh, and he holds up the baby like he's in the Lion King towards the Doctor Fate helmet. Uh, as and, a... <laughs> and you know the cape starts flowing towards the baby. It's a really nice image. Yeah, and basically because he implies that he's going to have to kill the baby without caring about it. Courtney gets up some courage. I, I think this is really smart because it makes you root for her right after this. Because at this moment, it's like, okay, I want to root for her now because she's willing to go up against this big bad on her own. And we've just seen how he took out, you know, yeah. a third of the, the, the main team. She, she's the ultimate underdog here, but she's willing to fight it anyway. So it makes you want to root for her. And, be, and she has a new character. So it's like, yes, let's, let's make us like her. And he laughs. Yeah. And then, of course, everyone else shows up in the time ship, <laughs> which... I mean, we say time ship, we do actually mean like a classic wooden Viking looking boat that has a lot of clocks going down the side of it. That's that. I is... love this thing. Every time it shows up, I love it. And it comes through like a portal, uh, because it was a time ship. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone shows up in uh, the Tower of Fate, and you know, Alan takes on takes on Mordru with the with the green energy. Uh, they always try to do it. Uh, he actually zaps. Uh, Jay and Hippolyta to a random place in the, the Tower of Fate and even with his speed, Jay can't figure his way out immediately, so uh, so the, it, it basically starts defeating all the GSA one by one is ultimately what's happening he rips off Kendra's wing uh, he breaks Wildcat's arm, which is relevant because yeah. there's, there's, there's an issue soon where he's in a where Wildcat's on his own in a wheelchair which I always remember, yeah, it's a fun oh, yeah, one yeah, it's very distinctive, it's great yeah. um, he, he grabs the staff from Starman and smacks him up the face with it yep and Courtney becomes important yet again because she hears a voice. She hears hears a voice coming from the helmet, 
and she goes towards and she gets sucked into the cloak and into the helmet and she's inside this world and Kent Nelson's there with his wife and he's kind of the yeah, keeper just, of the helmet. Just want to specify, she's in the amulet, not the helmet. Sorry, the amulet, yes. Uh, and he's like, hey kid, you know, uh, can I need you to go out there and grab the Scarabus thing? Her Scarabius. Scarabius, maybe? Scarabius, whatever. Uh, yeah, I'd you grab that and do this with it. Uh, give it to the baby, um, counting on you kind of thing. And, you know, and again, she goes out there and she does it, and she actually runs towards the baby with this thing in her hand. I actually love that panel. I mean, it's probably my favourite panel in the book. It's her running with this terrified look in her face towards the baby, hoping that this thing will just take. And just yeah. Mordru looking over his shoulder and be like, huh? <laughs> and be like, shit. <laughs> So, yeah, I don't think it's my fav- my favorite panel in the issue, but it's a, it is a really good panel. I like it. No, no doubt about that. Actually, it may be the, the moment where she actually attacks more Drew to try and save the baby earlier. They're, they're both good moments. I kind I kind of love his reaction though. You know that, that just that panel of him looking down and just laughing at the the absurdity of this this random girl trying to stop him. Well, that's why I love this part at the end, though, where he looks over his shoulder because he he discounted her as this like nothing that you know she yeah. can't pose a threat to me. And he looks over his shoulder, and it's this just moment of, wait, she may actually be about to win. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, <laughs> like that. That's it's beautiful. So it she she connects the scarabus with with the baby, and the final page is a full page spread of Doctor Fate, fully grown, cloak blowing in the wind, uh, as it were. And it's like, and then yeah. and you learn it's actually been him doing the narration. Yes, yes, he's been the one narrating the whole time this issue, and. It says, next issue, who is fate? And that's a good question. We're, we're going to find out. So, uh, hell, of, hell, of a, hell of an issue again. I mean, I hate... This is the problem with picking our favourite at the end of each week, is that I, or each episode, is that I feel like GSA Some is going... Has, has an advantage. GSA is going to win a lot at the time, and I feel like Wade's Flash could get there where it's maybe going blow for blow, right? And it could be fighting them. Yeah. You know, back and forth. Do you know, do you know the problem is, I'm on record multiple times mm-hmm. as the JSA this this run being like my favorite run of all time of of any comic. So it's it's kind of unfair. But admittedly, I've not read most of the other stuff that we're going to be you know that we're putting against it. So th- there's a chance that something can you know be a nice surprise and and you know pull up ahead. You never know. It was possible possible uh but no the book looked good uh i love everything in here with courtney giving her ca- kind of a, a spotlight issue I and mean, obviously those sections of the book where she's not you know in this issue but she has all the big moments like you know the, the, the her yeah. being in the tower of fate alone with with mordru and then actually getting the the guidance from ken and doing the final thing that sort of saves the day giving her yeah. the spotlight to say hey she's going to be useful you should root for her and because, you know, because everyone else like, essentially got turns in small teams last issue to have their, their moments, right? Uh, this issue was, no, this is about Courtney's introduction. Uh, then maybe a little hot girl, but not much. Uh, and I appreciate that, because I think there's a really good job at that, and it makes me it want to for her. So. And her victory feels really earned, because even though she doesn't physically beat Mordru, she just, you know, she wins. The fact that we watched him take down, like, the entire JSA, pretty much no problem. Well, I, I think it that's... Really felt it was a threat. Well, I think that's what makes it really work, is that it's not like she suddenly just gets really powerful and takes him on as if she can swat him like a fly. He's still dangerous to her, and it's just about her having the courage to try and sneak in this one little thing that she has to do, and that's what yeah. saves the day. Um, you know, she's still a rookie, she still doesn't know what she's doing yet, but she's got the courage to do this, and it makes you want to, yeah. you know, be on her side. Fate, so. on the other hand, he might be able to go toe-to-toe. Oh, he might be able to, yeah. yeah. Which might be what we get next issue. Uh, so, no, uh, really good stuff, really exciting, uh, having to devote the time to her, and then, you know, everyone else getting the little moments as well. Uh, so it really sells Mordru as this big bad, because he does literally go through every member. <laughs> mm. Quite brutally in some cases as well. I don't know if Kendra can regrow a wing, or what. I don't know if they address it, because obviously she's got her wings back before long. I don't know if they ever address how she has them back. G- given that we know... From you know, just from memory you know, with uh, with Wildcat, that they do kind of make mm. a big deal out of this, and you know, do address the whole context of it. I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt that maybe they do address it. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, but not real good stuff. Uh, what are you giving this issue? I'm I'm gonna give it like an eight point five because it's it's kind of great. 
Yeah, I'm going to agree with the 8.5.